best time to prepare for a crash is before a crash. And uh, the biggest crash in world history is coming. On this crash, Secretary Yellen is warning that if Congress doesn't raise the debt limit, there'll be a financial crisis, a calamity, as she calls it. Is this what you think will trigger this crash? Well, I think it's already been triggered, personally. So there's no correlation between the economy and what Yellen and Powell are doing. Now, I'll make I say one more thing is that I'm a little strange in that I like crashes. So this next crash is going to be really, really good, but it'll bring down gold, silver, Bitcoin stocks. But the good news is, is a crash is a good time to get rich. But the problem is we're stacked with this massive debt and, and all it's done is bump up the stock market and real estate market. The money has not gone into the economy. That's the sad part. So the rich get richer, but the poor and middle class are getting poorer. It is tragic what's happening today. I don't know what it'll exactly be, but you can't keep printing fake money. You know, that's M2. And the velocity of money keeps dropping, but the debt keeps going up. So you and I don't have to go to Harvard to understand. <laughs> That's not good. So they're just going to keep doing the same old thing. And meanwhile, you know, it's what we're doing today is actually going to kill, kill the economy too, because you and I are now on, let's say, Zoom. So technology is going to wipe out more jobs. Like who's going to fly? Who's going to stay at a hotel? You know, I can now do more seminars in a day. You know, I did one the other day. I was I did a recording in Europe. I did one in the States. And then that evening, I did one in Singapore. Why did I don't climb on an airplane? So meanwhile, they're trying to keep these dead industries afloat. And somebody's going to say, hey, it cannot go much further. And it's coming this October because the velocity of money is now too slow. Savings are going up. Spending is going down. This is going to be the biggest crash in world history. We have never had this much debt pumped up. Debt is the biggest problem of all, but that's called M2, money supply. And the debt to GDP ratio is out of sight. The best way to destroy the capitalist system is to debauch the currency. I think we better wake up because our academics, our school teachers are Marxist. And I'm not saying that bad. My poor dad was a Marxist, but he didn't know it. He's a good man. He's a school teacher. But he didn't know anything about money, nothing. And so that's what they're teaching our kids. I'm more afraid of the Fed coin than anything else. It'll totally be central control of the economy and our lives. They'll monitor everything we do by how we spend our money. Our freedom will be gone. I didn't fight for Republicans or Democrats. I fought for our freedoms. And so that's really my concern today. That is my concern. We're losing our freedoms. The normal thing in a free market economy for consumer prices is to go down. That's what's normal. And in fact, if you look at the U.S. economy in the 18th century, prices fell for 100 years. The government creates inflation deliberately for its own uh, purposes, its own benefit. But then it wants to cover up the effects of inflation so the public doesn't complain and the Fed can continue to justify its monetary policy. If anything, it's going to get worse because from the government's perspective, allowing inflation to get worse is better than fighting it. Because if they fight it, they're going to immediately set off a chain of events that is a, politically a non-starter, right? If the federal government were to, or the Fed were to fight inflation, we would have not only another real estate crash, stock market crash, bond market crash, we'd be in a depression and the U.S. government would have to slash uh, spending. I mean, we wouldn't be talking about how much new stimulus we're going to get. It would be how much of the old stimulus are we going to lose, right? The government would have to contract. Appreciation, you would think of uh, the real value of an asset uh, over time. If it's appreciating, it is gaining a value. Uh, but if its price is only rising as a reflection of inflation, really a loss of value of the money that you're using to measure uh, prices, then it's not a real appreciation. 
The Fed cannot fight this inflation. The markets have got that wrong. In fact, I don't even think the Fed is going to try to fight it. I think the Fed knows that if it fights inflation, it's going to lose. So it's not even going to fight. Now, it will bluff. It will talk a good game. So it never actually has to get in the ring and get knocked out. So it's going to pretend that it's got these tools and it's going to use them, but it can't use them. If you remember what it took to end the inflation of the 1970s, and again, the inflation we're about to experience is going to be worse. It's already starting off worse early in this decade than it started early in the 1970s. But what happened in 1980 to finally break the back of inflation and to restore confidence in a sinking dollar and to break a gold bull market where the price of gold went from $35 an ounce to $850. What it took to bring that to an end was the combination of Paul Volcker with 20% interest rates and Ronald Reagan with government is the problem, the free market is the solution. We are nowhere near that type of combination today. We have the polar opposite of Volcker in Powell and maybe the opposite of Reagan in, in Biden. So we're gonna have loose money, we're gonna have bigger government, bigger deficits, and even if Powell wanted to allow interest rates to rise to 20%, how's he gonna do it? We saw what happened a few years ago when they raised them to two and a half percent. Everything collapsed. Well, if the economy couldn't withstand two and a half percent then, it certainly can't withstand it now because the economy is far more levered up today than it was in 2018. The U.S. government has much more debt. Corporations have much more debt. Americans have much more debt. The markets are far more overvalued. Stock market's a bigger bubble. The real estate market's a bigger bubble. So we're far more vulnerable to a rise in interest rates than we were then. And look how much damage a small rise did then Imagine what an even bigger rise, a rise that's actually high enough to fight inflation would do. That's why they're not gonna do it. So the fact that the markets are worried that the Fed is going to fight inflation with an aggressive or any type of monetary policy that somehow is gonna be negative for, the, for gold and positive for the dollar is, is completely wrong. And I think that relatively soon, the markets are gonna to start to price in the fact that they've got it wrong, that the Fed is not going to be able to fight inflation, that even if it tried to fight inflation, it would lose, and therefore it won't. And so the Fed is going to go from assuring the markets that it will fight inflation to assuring the markets that we don't have to worry about inflation, that inflation is a good thing, that inflation is necessary part of prosperity and economic growth that it's a, it's a trade-off uh, that's worth making because jobs are important, because economic growth is important, because all these government programs are important. And we're not gonna sacrifice all that over some number. You know, We don't have to keep inflation as at 2%. All right, 3%, okay, 4%, 5%. That's not that bad. That's what they're gonna try to tell us. At the same time, I'm sure they will probably go back uh, to the drawing board on the CPI and figure out a way to make the number even smaller so that they can cover up um, the results of their inflation. And again, you got to remember, inflation is a tax. That's really what it boils down to is a tax because the government has two ways of paying for stuff. It can do it honestly through taxation. It can also legitimately borrow money, but borrowing money simply obligates future taxpayers to pay higher taxes. So that's also taxation. But the other way that government can get money, if they don't want to do it honestly, is they can print it you know, or they can ask the Federal Reserve to print it. Or the way we do it, the U.S. government sells treasuries and then the Federal Reserve buys them in the marketplace, preventing interest rates from going up and funding all this government spending. But now the government is not spending the money it collected in taxes. It's spending the money the Fed printed. But that doesn't mean taxpayers are off the hook. That doesn't mean we get a bunch of government for nothing just because the Fed printed the money to pay for it instead of us sending our money to Washington 
because when the Fed prints money and gives it to the government, the Fed is effectively stealing our purchasing power. They're making all the dollars that we hold less valuable. So the price of everything goes up as a result. And that increase in price, in which we call inflation, which actually is the result of inflation, amounts to a tax. So the way the government taxes us, instead of taking our money, they take our purchasing power. So the result is the same. If I have you know, $10,000 and the government takes away 1,000 in taxes, now I can only buy $9,000 worth of stuff. Well, if they leave me with $10,000 and print a bunch of money, and now prices go up by 10%, and now I can buy less stuff, I buy 10% fewer goods because the price of everything went up 10%. I'm in exactly the same predicament. Had the government been honest and taken my money, instead they were dishonest and took my purchasing power because the money they printed, they gave it to somebody else and somebody else spent that money and they bought the products that I can no longer afford. And this is what's going to be going on throughout the economy. Help by spreading this message. Share with your friends, leave a like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Turn on notifications to stay updated.